So this is session seven, and we call this Don't Mess This Up. And that's because this is the make or break of client success, and that is your onboarding. If you get onboarding right, you will make more money. You will have happier clients, and life will be so much easier. If you get onboarding wrong, life is going to be difficult, and it's going to be much harder for your business to be successful. Unfortunately, the majority of trainers get onboarding drastically wrong. Um, so I want to talk about that today and show you really how you guys can help tidy up your onboarding and make sure, along with all the other sessions that we've done so far with this training, um, how you can actually onboard your clients to be successful. Because in previous trainings, we've talked about what goes into the systems, how to actually get people in and so on. Now we need to think about how we're actually going to go and onboard them. So why is onboarding important? Now, if you are struggling with onboarding, um, your online personal training clients, Maybe you are. Maybe you are and you know that you're actually struggling to onboard your clients and you find it difficult to do this. You find clients asking lots of questions all the time, but maybe you don't even know you're actually struggling with this yet. Maybe you don't actually know there's actually a problem because they're not telling you, but you might be noticing issues like clients not adhering to the program. So maybe they're not checking in or anything like that. Maybe they're leaving early. They're not staying as long as you feel they should be staying. Or even they start requesting refunds or chargebacks pretty quickly. Maybe this is actually happening as well. And the root of these problems often lie in the onboarding process, which is why it's so important to get this right. So why is it actually important? Why is this so important? Why do things like chargebacks and refunds and the lack of adherence matter? Well, let's just talk about this here. Let's talk about why people actually buy from you in the first place. So clients purchase your services based on emotion, but they justify their decision with logic. So what I mean by that is when you try to sell to somebody, especially a consumer, you work at you basically talk about the emotional side of it, like how you're going to help them, what problems you're going to solve for them, and why that's important for them. That's buying with emotion. Most people buy with emotion, especially when it comes to these kind of services. But once they purchase something, their logical brain starts to click in. And what they try and do is they try and justify that decision with logic. So at that point, you need to start thinking about how can I, how can I make sure that their logical brain is like, yes, this is the right decision for me. Now, if your onboarding process isn't perfect, the logical brain will start to doubt their choice, and this will then lead to lower adherence because they start questioning whether they made the right decision. That, in turn, will lead to poor results, and ultimately, that will lead to less income in your business. The reason it's going to lead to less income in your business is because you might risk chargebacks. You might risk people asking for refunds, which take up time for you, whether you've got a refund policy or not. There's still time being taken up dealing with that situation. It can lead to poor reviews. It can lead to lack of testimonials. It can lead to lack of people sharing their results and talking about their results. It can lead to lack of people speaking about you to other, to other people. And it's also going to lack a lack in retention. They're not going to stay around with you long, which is where most of the money is made in, a, in an online fitness business. It's the retention of that client. So all of these can be affected by your onboarding process. So what should a well-structured onboarding process do? Well, this is critical for client adherence. So on getting your onboarding right, it will ensure your clients stick to the program for the long term. It's time efficient as it's going to save you so much time in the long run. If you're having to do things for your onboarding manually, then you've not got it set up properly. You're doing it wrong. You need to make sure you have automation set up for this. You make sure you have a system and process in place so you shouldn't have to do anything. It should be instant gratification for those clients. That's how you justify with logic. You have to have instant gratification with it, and that's what your onboarding should do. And then client retention is going to keep your clients engaged for longer and keep them satisfied for longer as well. So let's talk about a couple of key steps to include in your onboarding process. So the step one, kind of mentioned already, you want to automate your onboarding process. So automation is essential for smooth and efficient onboarding experience. So here's a couple of things you want to be doing when it comes to doing that. The first thing is immediate access. Ensure your clients receive instant access to resources or information as soon as they make a payment. So this is going to include welcome emails, maybe access to online portals or apps or any introductory materials. Now we're going to dig a bit more into this shortly. Um, you don't want to be overwhelming people. I'll talk about why in a minute. But you want to make sure it's immediate. What you don't want to happen is someone maybe come to your website or you send them a link through to take payment or whatever. They make payment and then nothing happens. That's where you start getting problems. That's when people start second guessing their decision where the risk of chargeback might be there but thinking, okay, well, what have I bought here? Or I've just been conned or whatever it is. So you want to make sure there's immediate access, there's instant gratification. If you can do that and make it awesome, you won't have any problems here. You really won't have any problems here. But be careful because in a minute we're going to talk about how you can get that drastically wrong and cause bigger issues for yourself. 
Um, but yeah, that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing is use automation tools to go and do this. So you can use like email automation software, uh, client management system, CMS, for example. Um, you can use apps, of course, like PT Distinction, uh, and just automate scheduling and streamline communications and task management for your clients during the onboarding process and for you as well. What you don't want to do is have to remember to do this yourself. You don't want to be sat there thinking, oh, I've got to go and get this sent out and then manually start sending out this email, this pack, adding them to the app. If you're doing any of that stuff yourself, you've got this wrong. You should not have to be doing anything. The moment somebody pays you, everything should happen like this. It should be instantaneously. You should have to do absolutely nothing. And for people that come join us over in the academy, the people that use the, the super system that we call it, which we've talked about already in this training, they have to do absolutely nothing for the first week. Nothing at all for the first week. And that's really how you need to be. You can engage with that if you want to. You can do things. But it should be set up as a point where you do absolutely nothing because that's going to keep things safe. That's going to ensure that there's a process that they're going to go through. So it doesn't matter whether you're there to action something. It doesn't matter whether you're on holiday. It doesn't matter whether you're busy doing something else when an emergency happens. The systems, the automations, and the processes are taking care of this critical part of the process. So you've got to go and get that right. Okay, next thing. Following on from that is step two, keep it simple. We talk about this all the time in the group. So simplicity is the key to preventing overwhelm. And here's how to keep your onboarding process pretty straightforward. So Let's just talk about overwhelm here at the moment. You've got to make sure you don't overwhelm people. If you give people everything when they sign up, you're going to overwhelm them because they're not going to go and read everything. You might think you've got a 20-page welcome document. They're not going to read it. I can guarantee you, probably if you listen to this, that they've got like these big documents. If you've got like a huge welcome pack that you send out, how many times are all those questions in there answered and you have to still answer them for your clients? And imagine most of the time. And that's because they just won't read it. Or if they do, they won't remember it, they won't retain it because there's so much they've got to do. They've signed this process because you're going to help them solve a problem. And there's by giving them so much information to start off with, bear in mind they're having to learn stuff. They're learning something new. They've got to learn what to action. They've got new tracking, a new app, a new whatever. They've got all these different things to learn and they feel like they're going to have to do it straight away. So they come into this process, they're going, oh crap, like what is all this stuff I've got to try and learn and take in? They might not have time to do it straight away. So let's say you do all that instantly in the first the first day and then the next day you're sending out another email or something like that and you expect them to get into your program, to start working out and doing whatever. Imagine if you did all that and somebody signed up at say 8 o'clock at night and they're like, I'm going to do this now so I'm ready for the next day to go and do it. Like, oh no, I've got to go and get this done now. Almost instantly they're feeling like they're falling behind. And if we think why most people sign up to a coach in the first place, it's probably because they've tried to get help before in the past. They felt overwhelmed. They felt like they've not been able to achieve it. They felt like they've not been able to go and do this. They felt like they're not capable of going to do it. And what have you done? You've overwhelmed them instantly and made them feel really crap about themselves because they feel as, well, I'm never going to get all this stuff done now. And I'm going to be on the back foot before I've even started. So many online trainers, when they first start out, do that. And it's so unfortunate because it's literally the downfall of their business. It doesn't take long for their business to start to fail after a year or two because they're doing that too much and they start to struggle. So we've got to get this right. So how do we make it straightforward? Well, we just deal with essential information only. So only ask for information that is absolutely critical for getting the client started. You need to stop overwhelming clients with too many forms or too many requests or too much tracking or whatever it is. So think about it this way. Ask yourself this question. If you're putting anything in your onboarding process, does that question or does that task help you make a better decision to help the client move forward? If it doesn't, then ask yourself this next question. Does that task, does that tracking, does that information or whatever it is, does that help the client make a better decision to help them move forward with their goals? If you can't answer yes to any of those, and bear in mind with that last one, they have to have an understanding in the first place. If you give them all the information, you might think, well, yes, of course, this is going to help them get the results, but they're not going to be able to implement it because it's too much. So is the things that you're going to get them to do right now going to give you the information you need to move them forward? If it's not, don't put it in there. It does not need to be there. It really doesn't need to be. And the next thing we need to do down here is clear instructions. So we need to provide clear and concise instructions for each step of the onboarding process. Use simple language and avoid jargon. Don't put complicated language in there. Use language that they're going to understand. And don't put things in there they don't need to know at this stage. Think about this as like learning a new language. You're not going to go and read War and Peace in French if you can't even say hello to somebody in that, in that language. 
you have to start with the basics and build up to it. And that's exactly what we need to do with onboarding. In fact, it's exactly what we need to do with our programs in general. So, for example, down here, instead of sending somebody a lengthy questionnaire, just ask the clients for basic information that will literally help the clients. And if it doesn't, you don't need to go and ask for it. All you're doing by giving them too much information to start off with is overwhelming the client. And what you're honestly doing is letting your ego get in the way. Now, I don't necessarily mean ego is a bad thing. You, it could be. You might be thinking, well, I need to give them all this stuff because I'm charging this amount of money. I need to give them extra value. Egos can be a good thing and a bad thing. Ego can be you talking down to yourself and second-guessing yourself. And ego can be the complete opposite as well, thinking you're better than yourself. It's both of those things. That's what ego is. So don't take this as the way of me calling you egotistical. What I'm actually just saying is your ego is getting the better of you. It's either talking down to you, it's making you second-guess yourself, or it's making you thinking, I need to go and do all this because this is me showing off what I'm capable of. Those two things are the downfall of every successful, well, every fitness business I've seen that's not been successful. They're letting ego do one of those two things that gets in the way, and it starts here at the onboarding. So don't let that get in the way of your success. Let's talk about how we can get this simple and make it right for the client. Uh, step three, spread it out. So you want to spread your onboarding process out. It's going to help your clients absorb information gradually and reduce that risk of overwhelm. So just like I talked about before when it comes to learning a new language, this is what we need to do here as well. We need to break this down step by step so things build up. So we're not going to get them to go in overwhelm and we have them go through a process that's going to kind of stack on top of each other over time. And just remember, you know, you might be thinking this person's paid this money to sign up to this program and this is what they want to do. This is not their life. It's not their life. They have a job. They have a family. They have other things going on around this, which is probably why in the situation in the first place, you cannot expect them to drop all that and completely overhaul their life in an instant. You can't do that. And if you do, then I guarantee you they won't stay with you for long term. I guarantee it. And they definitely won't re-sign to something else because they will look at it as like, okay, I can do this, but this is a short-term solution because I can't do this forever. That's what they're going to think. So when they get to the next, the time the next payments do or recharges do or renewals do or something like that, they will leave. Because like I can't keep doing this forever. They're going to see it as a short-term fix. That's the downside to this if you if you do it. Because every successful online fitness business we have seen, the money is in the retention. It's in the reselling. And if you don't do it like this, you're going to risk not reselling into the future. So how can you actually do this effectively? Well, you do a weekly onboarding schedule. That's how we do it. So we break the onboarding task down over a week period. This allows the client to take in information and action it at a manageable pace. Action being the key word here. Information isn't that useful to people. They've got all the information in the world. So whatever information you give somebody, make sure there's something for them to action or do with it. If they can't action or do something with it, don't give it them. Because if they're not actioning that information, it's not helping them get to where they want to be. It's not... They're not here for a lesson. They haven't signed up to you because they want to study nutrition or study exercise. If they do that, there's plenty of other places they can go to. They've joined you because they want a result. Yes, later down the line, we can start educating them more. At this point, they don't need educating. They need a result. They need a win. That's what we're trying to do here with this onboarding process. So break it down, make it actionable uh, at a manageable pace. And then use small daily check-ins. So this is everything that you should send the client that's going to help them move forward. So let me give you an example of this. So day one could be a welcome email with access to the training portal or an app and just the initial forms. That's it. That's what you do on there. Something they can complete five, ten minutes that's not going to take up a lot of time. And when you're doing this, tell them as well. Tell them it's only going to take them five minutes or ten minutes. Um, and then let's look at day two. So overview of how to track progress and then record the starting point. So what we're going to do is talk about how they're going to track in the future. And then we're going to record the starting point so they can practice it. That's it. Do for day two. Day three, introduction to the training program and basic nutrition guidelines. Again, showing them what to expect into the future. And then understand the kind of what we're going to be starting off with when it comes to basic nutrition. And then we're going to have instructions on the necessary apps or tools. For example, if you're going to use a food diary, if you're going to use the Extinction app, they're going to get used to starting to use this now. We introduce some of the features they might be using over this time. And again, like for example, a food diary you can get them just taking photos of their food diary uh, over the next few days. Uh, then we can look at some tips for staying motivated and just setting some realistic goals. So this is where we'll recap the goal setting. I always think it's a good idea to do about two-thirds of the way through the week because it reminds them why they actually signed up in the first place and it gets them to write this down and actually pay attention to those goals. Day six, uh, we're going to start introducing more of the support community and how to connect with other clients. So we want to make sure that, yes, we might be doing the more one-to-one -one thing to start off with. We've got those in one-to-one -one details. Now we're introducing them and getting more involved with the community because that community is going to help people stay. It's going to give them more proximity towards you, which is going to help with retention. 
And then day seven is a final check-in to answer any questions and ensure the client feels ready to start. So there's a couple of ways to do these final check-ins. You can just do them with the first kind of check-in. We just call it the first check-in and ask them certain questions for the client. It helps them make sure they're ready. You can even do what we call a kind of, I call like, it's kind of like a check-in call, uh, but we don't plan it in. It's like a quick text or a quick phone call sometimes to clients say, hey, how are you getting on with the introduction stuff? That five-minute conversation can be the difference between retaining the client and losing a client in the future. Really, really can. So these are the different ways I'll be looking at trying to trying to do this. Okay, cool. So let's just quickly um, summarize some of this here. So basically, an effective onboarding process is going to be crucial to your success at online personal training business. Really, it's as simple as that. Uh, so by automating the process, keeping it simple, and spreading out over a week, you can enhance the client experience, improve retention, and ultimately increase your income. So I want to have a go at implementing some of these steps to create a seamless onboarding process or experience, I should say, that sets your clients up for success from day one. That's what we're aiming to go and do here. Once you've streamlined your onboarding process, you should start to see a big improvement in client satisfaction and engagement. And then in turn, that should start making you more money. So lots of benefits from implementing this. Now, of course, if you need help and support when it comes to implementing any of this, why don't you come and join us over at the Academy? This is the, one of the things we do here is help you nail down your onboarding process to make sure you get this right and have it set up so it's all done automatically for you and you can do that over in the academy uh, and of course you can join today um, anyone can sign up the academy is always open for you to join and there's two options to sign up you can get lifetime access where you never have to pay for anything again or you can literally just pay a simple subscription uh, 97 pound per month commitment you know no commitment or anything like that um, you can start when you want cancel when you want and not only do you get access to the optc course you get access to our white label library we have all this kind of stuff set up for you as well but more importantly get access to our community so every single week we hold two group coaching calls you can jump on there ask questions myself and jed um you've got access to us all the time in the community as well um so there's loads of help and support around there so if you're on the fence about what you want to do in your online fitness business maybe you're struggling just to get things going maybe you're not sure what you need to do maybe you're worried about the time it's actually taking we can solve all those problems for you and you can start solving them for literally 97 pounds. That's a very small investment to making your business. And as always, we have a double money back guarantee on everything we do. So whatever you invest, you'll double that money back. That simple. Um, if you don't, we'll work with you for free until you do. Really is that simple. Um, so come and check it out. You can find that more over at ptng.com forward slash academy, or you can click the link um, that's somewhere around this video. And that's it for me um, and this training.